Fresa, fresa, fresa. Whole stock of aloe is one soul. That's like 25 cents. Beets, it looks like, and a stuffed potato. So it's day 100 of lockdown. And we're still alive. We're Alex and Lindsay. We're two travelers who were exploring South America. Suddenly, a strict lockdown began in Peru, and we've been stuck ever since. Along the way, we took in a stray dog, and he hasn't left our side. It's been months, and we're still here, so we're documenting the whole experience and sharing it with you. Good morning, guys. Guess what day it is today? It's day 100 of our lockdown here in Cusco, Peru. Can you Woo! guys believe that? I can't. <laughs> We've been here over 100 days. A fourth of a year we've been inside an apartment in Cusco, essentially. We never thought this would happen, and we stayed here instead of going home, <laughs> and things have changed. Things have changed a lot over the last few months. So we wanted to go out today and show you guys what it's like today on day 100, and then we'll backtrack and we'll show you guys what <laughs> our whole experience has been for the last few months. Right now, let's get on a bus and let's show you a little bit of how it is right now. Alright guys, we are waiting at a bus stop right now and we're going to be heading to a mall. We heard that malls are opening up today. For the first time in months. So we figured we'd go check it out. We'd go around the area where there's a lot of stuff going on and see how it's going in Cusco today. The bus is taking too long so we got a taxi for Six Salt Lakes instead. And this is Mr. Potato's first time in a car. Going to Rael Plaza, which is one of the biggest plazas shopping centers in Cusco, in this area at least. <laughs> okay, so they didn't allow dogs in the mall. Go figure. <laughs> So we took him to get groomed, so we have two hours to walk around and show you guys what it's like. So he's gonna look like a whole new dog after this, probably. The place. Huh? Yeah. Wow, so there is a long, long line to get into the mall, probably because it's the first day that it's opening. As we're sitting, standing in this long line, it's causing us to reflect a bit. <laughs> uh, we've got a lot of comments throughout our whole lockdown of people who don't agree with what we're doing. So the few times that we've left the house and we have gone on a hike or gotten a little exercise, which is actually legal now, some people have gotten upset saying that we should be at home and that it's because we're tourists and all their Peruvian brothers and sisters are at home. And that we should be investigated. <laughs> But if you think about it, if you look at what we were doing, we were high in the hills above, far away from everybody else. It was only us, and that actually is a lot better. A than lot some safer. A lot safer than what all the people are doing here. And a majority, a high majority, are Peruvian people. Look at what this looks like, and then think about what we were doing the other day when we went on a hike far away from everybody. Which one's more dangerous concerning coronavirus? So I guess what we're doing, we're asking you guys to actually stop and think for yourselves what's actually unsafe. Take a look at this. So as you can see, no social distancing here. All right guys, well that didn't work. Fail. We were in line for half an hour and it did not move. And it looked like we had a long way to go. So we'll just go a different day when there's less of a line or we'll go earlier in the day. <laughs> so right 
right now we're looking for an ink pad so that we can put Mr. Potato Head's paw on there and put it on postcards for you guys. Through Patreon you can support the channel and if you do that you can get postcards from us with a drawing or a paw print from Mr. Potato Head. So the name for an ink pad is Tampon. So I'm gonna ask for a uh, Tampon Negro. <laughs> so I feel a little bit weird asking for this because if you guys know English, you know that the name for feminine products are tampons and it sounds like that. <laughs> I love this. Negro? Negro. Oh, perfecto. And look at these barricades. We'll show you all the different barricades. It's all the different stores. Look at this, most of these carts have been gone for months, but now they're all coming back out like we've never seen before. People are trying to sell their sweaters, their touristic items, masks, everything on the streets. Beautiful market. Wow. Beautiful. We're ordering from our favorite place, Du Frappe. They have amazing ice cream shakes and burgers. And the Philippines. All the restaurants or anyone who takes money from you sprays it down so that the money's all wet. Gotta stay sanitary. Some aloe. Well, this is our first time buying some aloe. You can eat this or you can put it on your face. So this whole stock of aloe is one soul. That's like 25 cents. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So this is cool. It looks like it was like an internet cafe, photocopies, but now he's selling food out here. He's selling papa rellena, which is one of the main traditional foods in Peru that we really like. Four sole, so about a dollar, a little more than a dollar. Yeah. All right. Okay. Gracias. Papa reina. Comes with a little rice, beets it looks like, and a stuffed potato. Get a little of the sauces on there. Mmm. Better than the last one we had. I love the sauces here. Alex has got a little aloe sticking out of his backpack. <laughs> Don't hurt anyone with that. Mm. Potatoes are always good in Peru. Their mashed potatoes have the right amount of seasoning, sodium. Mm. Then we got it from this place right here. <laughs> this place is selling little chicken sandwiches here. That looks like quinoa, like a quinoa juice. So, a hundred days into lockdown, surprisingly it's gone relatively quickly. And as we got further into lockdown, it got easier and we adjusted. Yeah, it's amazing how much you adapt after a while. The first month was very hard, but yeah. then it kind of became just life. Our norm. And it's kind of weird thinking about how life usually would be <laughs> and how it will be after this. I follow you on YouTube. Oh, hey. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> sorry. All right, guys, so it's day 100 of lockdown. And we're still alive. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry guys, we got interrupted. Someone recognized us on the street and he watches our YouTube videos so we stopped to say hi. Nice guy. Really nice guy. So, as we were saying, at first lockdown was super difficult, very scary. We didn't know what was going to happen. But then we kind of had to just surrender to that fact that we didn't know what the future held and make the best of it. So in a hundred days, a lot has happened. And finally, we're allowed to walk around. A lot of things are opening up. A lot more this week than last week. And so you'll see all these cafes, restaurants, pharmacies, everything. We can actually go to these places. And like we said earlier, the malls are actually open now, <laughs> which is just crazy to us because we haven't seen people <laughs> for months. So as hard as this lockdown has been at times, it's been pretty cool to experience Cusco in this way that no one else will get to experience it maybe ever. 
All right, so now we're just gonna reminisce. We're gonna tell you about our best of these 100 days, the craziest, the weirdest, the things that stand out about our last 100 days on lockdown here. All right, so first I'm gonna start with the funniest thing that's happened during lockdown. I got spit on by a llama. <laughs> Unexpectedly, we'll include the footage right here, but. <laughs> Man. Didn't know that was gonna happen. <laughs> I just went up to some llama and it spit right in my face, all over, soaked. That was amazing. <laughs> Probably my favorite moment too. Another awesome thing that happened, we didn't catch this on film, but we were on a bus yesterday and the woman who collects the money, she came over to us and she wanted to spray alcohol on her hands. She did it to me, she did it to Lindsay, and then she sprayed <laughs> the head of Mr. Potato Head. She sprayed Mr. Potato Head's head. <laughs> and he was like, what the heck? What's that lady doing to me? And I have to say, we wondered the same thing. Why would you spray a dog's head with alcohol? I was kind of mad, but it was also kind of funny. I think we were both so taken by surprise that we just didn't know how to respond. And then we just started laughing. How do you even just sit in a Yeah, okay. All right, guys, we just got our food to go and we're gonna see if we're actually allowed to sit in a park and eat it because a week ago we weren't allowed to do that. All right now for our scariest most stressful moment during lockdown. For me it was when we found out that at one of our Airbnbs in the same complex we we're gonna have neighbors that tested positive for COVID. So we yeah. moved. <laughs> we moved as soon as we could got away from that situation but they took over the yard and everything so we had Mr. Potato Head with us. He liked to walk all around the yard, so we were afraid he could get on his fur or something like that. So yeah, that was scary. The next one I think is when we were in Plaza de Armas, which is the center of the historic district. And a cop followed Lindsay for a couple minutes up a hill because she took out her phone for 10 seconds to film something. And then he was talking to her for quite a while until I came up and then it sounded like he wanted to take me to the police station because I didn't have my my full passport with me. I had a copy of it. Yeah. So that was pretty scary. All right, let's eat something really quick and we'll continue. All right, so conveniently, we found a park that's right next to Du Frappe where we ordered from. So it looks like there's people sitting on benches talking. So we're gonna do the same and eat some food. All right, we're gonna show you our favorite item from this place. Their little Frappuccino ice cream shakes. Mm. The one that I got is queso de alado. They have a lot of different flavors, but I wanted to try something new. This is supposedly vanilla, cinnamon. What else? I forget the other flavor. There's, some, there's something in there, but anyway, I did Oreos and chips for my topping. And then I got a mango con leche. So it's like a creamy mango drink mm. with some mango and aguaymanto pieces on the top. Cheers. Cheers. I got a jalapeno cheeseburger. Mm. Delish. And then look at what they do for Alex. He I try to eat gluten free whenever I can. I have a weed allergy supposedly. She just dripped burger juice on my leg. Uh, <laughs> that can't be avoided. But look what they do for me. This is awesome. We've ordered from there a few times now and they do this. <laughs> oh my. You guys. Look it's at an that bun. Avocado bun burger. Plus avocado on it <laughs> that's under the bun. Wow. Dang. I don't know how I'm gonna eat that. And then we got some fries, some papas. Alright, so we just finished our awesome meal from Du Frappe. And now we're gonna go pick up our dog. I think he's gonna be very excited to see us. He hasn't been without us yet pretty much at all. We'll film his reaction for you guys. I think it's gonna be cute. We're gonna pick up our baby. Uh 
Look, this guy has a little electronics store in the trunk of his car. All these entrepreneurs here. All right, we are almost home. We have a clean potato head. <laughs> and we spent most of our day outside exploring. So we have a bunch of footage from the last three months and we wanted to show you our 100 days in 100 seconds. <laughs> So we've been in isolation for a couple days now. Suramerica is un continente de sorpresas. Look at this. Just deserted. Wow. Look, it's Rainbow Mountain. We finally got here. This is quarantine travel at its best. Cusco seems like such a beautiful city. Police on all sides. The president of Peru, he announced that men and women aren't allowed to go out together. One really good thing that's come out of this lockdown is just being appreciative for the little things that we used to take for granted. Can't do this with one hand. Whoa, that's cool. I'm gonna get the food that we need for the next few days. Just us two on the middle of the street. So definitely a lot more strict today than it has been the other day that I was out. Found out they're not selling any alcohol here. Uh, we just stopped at this little. <laughs> Guys, this is so crazy. Now it's time for Q&A. First question comes from Mark Keller says, if you found out that after the current five week quarantine that instead of it being lifted on June 30th, it was going to be extended again, but you also had the chance to fly home, would you stay in Cusco or return to the US? <laughs> this is like the hardest would you rather question for us right now. This is interesting because we were just talking about the possibility of it being extended. We really didn't think it would be this time because everything seems to be opening up, everything seems to be getting better, mm -hmm. but there's still that possibility that it might get extended again. And I haven't even asked Lindsay what she would want to do in that situation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's never think? been an easy decision for us. The thing is, if it does get extended, that means borders are still going to be closed and flights are still going to be very expensive to go home. So if it gets extended, we'll probably still stay here, keep making videos for you guys and trying to be as creative as possible. Because the reality is, if we go home right now, we're pretty much stuck there. We could travel within the U.S., but we wouldn't be able to go internationally. So I think we might as well just keep waiting it out in Peru. Yeah, now that things are opening up and we can have delivery now, like it's not quite the lockdown that it was mm -hmm. a few weeks ago when we were just, we felt like we were in a prison in our house and yeah. we couldn't get out. Now we can go out a little bit. We've been on some hikes. We can get food. We have more Peruvian foods to try, so yeah. it wouldn't be all that bad and if this, we were staying here. This big Airbnb has helped us out a lot too to feel more spacious. We can like right now we're sitting outside on our patio. This place has been great and it's helped out a lot. So yeah, definitely awesome. And if you want to check out the Airbnb that we've been in, we made a video tour about it. And also it is linked below if you might want to stay here. Next question comes from Joanne DeFalco. She says, what will your destination be after lockdown ends? Well, I think the first thing that we've been really wanting to do is Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu supposedly will be opening uh, at the on the first of next month, so that's just a week or two away. Mm -hmm. So if we can do that, we will do that as soon as possible. We want to do Rainbow Mountain. Sacred Valley, it's about two to three hours from here and there's a lot to see there. Humante Lake. Lake Titicaca, Lake Titicaca. and Puerto Maldonado. I can never say this one. Puerto, Puerto Maldonado. 
it's a little rainforest and we want to see a ton of wildlife and explore that too. So there's plenty for us to do here. We will not get bored. Yeah, so mostly it seems like we'll stay around the whole area of Cusco, Machu Picchu and all that, and then maybe a little bit south. We can't go north right now. It's just not a good situation up there. Yep. So look forward to the videos from the southern part of Peru. Next one comes from Fran G says, do you call yourself travelers, tourists, or backpackers? That is a hard question. They're all pretty similar. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of depends on the lingo you want to use. I personally call myself a traveler. Yeah, I would say I call myself a traveler because I've been doing it for quite a while now, and I've traveled in all different sorts of ways. I had a van life for a while, so I lived in a van. I've also done backpacking, and I have occasionally brought a suitcase. And sometimes it's traveling for a week, sometimes for months or almost a year. So I think with all of that, I think traveler is more all-encompassing than like backpacker or tourist. A traveler seems more like a long-term lifestyle kind of thing. A tourist reminds me of someone that's visiting a place for maybe a week or two. Exactly. That's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think I've been a tourist for five years. And even in my own country, if we travel in our own country, are we tourists? Not so much. So Depends who you ask, I guess. But travelers. We'd say travelers. Our last one comes from Stuart Law. It says, do you know if there is a difference of Cusco foods from Lima foods? So we think they're fairly similar, but from what we've heard, Lima is more known for their food scene. Lima is the food capital of Peru, and even of South America, some say. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people tell us that the food is better in Lima. And some of the dishes, I think, are different because Peru kind of has uh, dishes from different regions. Mm -hmm. So there Go ahead. <laughs> so there are like the Cusqueño uh, foods. I can't think of, off the top of my head which ones are Cusqueño. Uh, I think Chiriuchu, even though it has different ingredients from different areas, I think it's something that they have in Cusco uh, traditionally. So in sure. Lima, you're going to find a lot of ceviches, you're going to find a lot of chifa, traditional Peruvian dishes, which you can find some of those things here in Cusco as well, but I think Lima just has a lot more. And maybe they do it better. I don't know. We only spent a few days in Lima, so yeah. this is just going off of what we've heard from people in the comments. All right, guys, as always, thank you for all your questions. If you want your question answered, please put Q and A before your comment in the comments below. We need more questions from you guys. All right, thanks so much for watching. Click the like button. It helps us out a lot. Leave a comment below. And please subscribe if you haven't already if you want to see more videos like this one. And we will see you in the next video. So if you want more, if you want daily stuff, you should head to Instagram, find us at Alexander Travel Bum, and that's where you'll find daily stories and photos about our travels. Hey, thanks for making it all the way through this video. If you want to watch more, click one of these videos, subscribe because I'm traveling all around the world and I'm sharing the whole thing with you. Thanks.